Hello and welcome to Umbrago Learning Base. Jonathan here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can migrate your Umbrago 8 project on cloud to Umbrago 10. Before we get started, let's quickly take a look at the requirements before getting started with the migration. First of all, you need to have an Umbrago cloud project running the latest version of Umbrago 8. You also need a clean project running the latest version of Umbrago 10 with at least two environments. And you also need a backup of your Umbrago project database. And with that, we can now get started with migrating an Umbrago 8 project to Umbrago 10. Let's get started. Okay, as you can see here, I'm on an Umbrago 8 project running the latest version of Umbrago 8. Let's just take a quick look and see I have that I have some content uh, on my project here. Great, let's, uh, let's uh, quickly go to the back office of my project. So let's write a slash Umbrago up here. As you can see, we have a couple of uh, content nodes here. And we go to, if you go to the settings, we can also see we have two document types and we have two templates as well. Great, great. Let's go back to the cloud portal and go to our clean Umbrago 10 project over here. Let's click, great. As you can see, it has both a development environment and a live environment. Now let's go ahead and clone down the development environment. So let's take the clone URL here and go to my uh, cloning tool here and clone it down. Great, it all got all the information. Let's just take the, the right folder where we want to save the project. I created a specific folder for this where I also have my eight project and my database backup. Great, name is good, so let's clone it down. Great, now it's done. Let's just take a look at uh, the files and we can see we have uh, our files here. And let's go to our Umbrago project here. Great. Okay, so the next step is to create a backup of your Umbrago 8 projects database. In this case, I've actually cheated a little bit and already created a backup of it. I'll make sure to leave the documentation down below. Okay, so I connected to my uh, local uh, uh, server. Um, I'm going to import a data tire application and I need to have a backpack file, which I already has. So let's go ahead and find uh, the file. So I click here and uh, let's go back to my migration folder here. As you can see, I have my backup here and my V8 backup backpack. So let's open it. Click next and let's click next again. Everything looks good and finish, and then it's going to start importing my database. Awesome. It's now finished. Let's uh, just close this one down. And as we can see down here, I have my V8 uh, backup database uh, on my local PC now. Awesome. Okay, let's open up our V10 project. And uh, from now on, we're going to be mostly working from it. And as you see, Visual Studio is opening up. Great. Awesome. Now that Visual Studio is open, let's go to our app setting JSON file. Here I'm going to add a connection string with, uh, to my uh, local database, as well as to being able to authorize a database upgrade, I need to enable unintended upgrades as well. So first off, let's add the connection string down here. Uh, boom, and paste it in. Great. As we can see, the server is my uh, local uh, computer and the database over here is uh, my V8 backup and I'm just going to use the integrated security. Awesome. Now that I've added this, let's go ahead and add the unintended upgrade. This is going to upgrade the project uh, behind the scenes without me having to do much. Cool. So let's uh, add it uh, here. Boom. Great. Let's save it and perfect. Now let's build the project real quick. And once it's done building, we can go ahead and run our project. As we see here, it's opening up and it says that page not found. This is completely fine. This is what will happen because we haven't migrated our view files over yet. So this is uh, completely okay. Awesome. So once it's done, let's remove the unattended upgrade here as it's done upgrading the database. So let's run our project again. 
And once um, once our site is up and running, we can uh, we can log in using Umbrago ID. So let's uh, see here again page not found. But let's uh, go ahead and uh, go to the back office. As you can see here, we can sign in with Umbrago ID. So let's uh, go ahead and do so. Great. And as you can see, we have my content nodes here. And I have my document types as well, as well as my templates. Awesome. Next, let's go ahead and merge the files from our V8 project to our V10 project. So let's uh, go back here. Let's uh, just uh, minimize it and see I have my V10 project to the left and my V8 project to the right. The first files I want to merge is the view files from my V8 project. So let's go to the view folder here and the view folder on my V10 project. I'm going to take the content page and home page uh, view here and move it to the V10 project. Make sure to not uh, overwrite any uh, default macro partials and partials. Next, I'm going to move the media files that I have. I have a couple of images here. So let's go to the root here and media and let's uh, move the, the images here. Also make sure to move any folders related to uh, CSS and JavaScript as well. In this case, I don't have any folders but just in case. Also be aware that config files no longer live in the web.config file in Umbrago 10 and instead is in the app settings.json file. You'll need to make sure that you update the app settings.json file with any custom settings that you had in your Umbrago 8 project to match. Okay, let's build our project real quick and then let's run it again. As you will quickly see is that we are now with our views or templates moved over, we're gonna have a lot of errors on our front end. This is totally expected because we haven't updated our code to v10 yet. Great. So now let's uh, go ahead and uh, go to the back office of my project up here because we need to do a couple of things first. Um, we need to go to the settings uh, tab here and then go to the deploy tab. Here we need to uh, run and or extract the schema to data files uh, to generate our UDA files in our project. So let's go ahead and do so and trigger the operation. As we can see up here, it's now uh, yes, starting it up and um, it's now in progress. And once it's done, um, we can move on. Now we can see it's done. Let's go to our V10 project and see if our UDA files are there. Let's go to the browser folder here, go to deploy and the revision folder. And bam, as we can see, we have a lot of data types and we have our media files and our templates as well. Great, so all the UDA files have been generated successfully. Awesome. Now let's uh, select the schema deployment from data files to just to make sure that everything checks out the UDA files that we've generated. So it's uh, starting up now. And uh, once it's done, we'll see that it's completed, which means that everything checks out with the UDA files. Very awesome. Okay, with the deploy operations done, we can now go ahead and update our custom code. So let's first go to my home template down here. And here I need to change what we inherit from and the using statement as well. So I have a code snippet ready, or ready already. So let's change the inherits and let's change the using statement as well. You can find these snippets in the documentation for, for, this, uh, for this guide here which I will add in the description down below. So let's uh, just save it. Oh, I forgot to tag here, boom, save it again. Let's just take this here, go to our content page and let's um, put it down below here, yes. Let's just take the alias up here and change it to the correct one down here. And let's just remove this up here, awesome. Be aware that depending on the size of the project that is being migrated and the amount of custom code and implementations, this step is going to require a lot of work. Also, be aware that the packages you are using needs to be available for v10 as well. You also need to make sure that forms in the database is enabled. As in Umbrago Forms version 9 and above, it's only possible to store forms data in the data database. So if Umbrago Forms is used on Umbrago, the Umbrago 8 project, make sure to first migrate the forms to the database. I'll add the guide to how this can be done in the description down below. Great. Now let's continue. 
Okay, so now we've updated the custom code. Let's go back to our content section here. And let's just have a quick look and see how it looks on the front end. Awesome, as you can see, we have our content now. And let's go to my other page just to have a quick look. And again, we have my we have the content here. Awesome, so we actually now migrated our Umbrago 8 project to Umbrago 10. Now let's uh, deploy all our changes to our Umbrago Cloud project. As you can see, we have quite a lot here. So let's go ahead, ahead and stage it. So it's ready for being committed. Write a commit message here. I'm deploying to v10, upgrade to cloud, and then commit the file. Let's go ahead and push them up to our Umbrago Cloud project. So let's push. And as you can see, it's now pushing. It's now done. It might take a while depending on how big your project is. And um, once it's done, let's uh, go back to my Umbrago Cloud project over here. So let's go up here, go to umbrago.io, sign in. And let's go to my project over here. Great. As we can see, we have one change ready for deployment. Let's just uh, go to the back office quickly to have a look. Okay, let's close this one down. Let's go to the settings and the deploy tab. Here we need to run a, a schema deployment from data files, which will generate our UDA files on our project. So we can see our document types. So let's get started. It might fail, it might not in this case. Hopefully it's gonna, uh, it's gonna not fail. As we can see, it's completed. Let's uh, quickly go back to our local project so we can uh, transfer up our content to our development environment as well. So let's go over here, click on the three dots up here, and let's queue it for transfer. So we're just queuing everything, and then uh, let's transfer it to the development environment here. So we're queuing every content that we have. Great, so far everything looks good. Bam, and it's completed. Let's uh, uh, just go back to uh, my uh, project here. And let's go up here and just uh, refresh it. And we should now be able to see our document types here. And we can see our templates here as well. Let's go to the content section. And as you can see, we also have our content here as well. Awesome. Let's just have a quick look and see if, uh, if everything looks as it should. Boom, boom, boom. Go to the info tab here. Look at front end, awesome. It looks like it's working. Let's uh, just take a look at the other page. Awesome, this works as well. Great. Now we can go ahead and deploy our changes to my live environment. So let's uh, write a deploy summary here. Deploying my uh, V10 upgrade. Upgrade, uh, yes, to live. And then let's go ahead and deploy to live. Again, this might uh, take a while depending on how big your project is. So let's just uh, wait for a second and uh, for this to be done. Bam, as you can see, it's now done. And uh, we deployed our changes to the live environment. Let's uh, have a quick look at our live environment. Still, we don't have any content because we haven't transferred that yet. However, our document types should be visible in the settings section. So let's uh, close this one down again. Go to settings. And as we can see, we have our document types and we have our templates. Awesome. Now let's uh, go ahead and uh, queue our content for transfer. And open the transfer queue and transfer it to our live environment. Awesome. Now it's been uh, transferred. Let's go back to live, go back to the content section refresh it, and as we can see, we now have our content here as well. Very nice. Let's have a look, see how it looks on the front end. Perfect, we have our content on our front end now. Very nice. So now we've actually managed to migrate our Umbrago 8 project to Umbrago 10, and everything looks good. Once you're done, set up uh, rewrites on your Umbrago 10 site, and set up the host names for your project as well. 
Great. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Jonathan, and I'll see you in the next one. Jonathan out.